Russia's unjustifiable invasion of Ukraine takes us back to the darkest episodes of Europe's history. We Europeans are supporting the Ukrainian people who are defending their freedom and democracy. How are we doing that? We're sending weapons for their defense, yes, but we're also imposing some really harsh economic sanctions against the Russian government, Putin and his circle of oligarchs. The goal is clear. We want Putin's invasion of Ukraine to be so costly to him that his support cracks and he's forced to desist. The most painful sanction for the Russian economy has been the blockage of the reserves of the Central Bank of Russia. In this video, I will explain how this sanction works. Russia has been preparing for years to face possible sanctions and has accumulated reserves worth $630 billion in foreign currencies such as the dollar, the euro, the yen or the yuan or the mimi. International reserves allow Putin to defend the value of the ruble and the Russian economy. What is the plan? Well, when the value of the ruble plummets in the face of economic sanctions, the Russian central bank can protect the ruble by buying rubles and selling dollars, yens, euros and yuans, so that demand for rubles and therefore their value remains stable. The truth is that of those $630 billion in reserves that it has accumulated, little corresponds to banknotes within the national territory. Benston estimates that there are only about 12 billion in euros and dollars inside Russia. Where is the rest of the money then? Well, the same way we carry our money, the vast majority of Russians' reserves exist only as figures recorded in the books of the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan. On the other hand, as the chart shows, Putin has made huge effort to diversify his reserves in recent years, buying a lot of gold and yuan. So under normal circumstances, the Russian central bank has the institutions where he has put the reserves to cash those claims, but now the Western central banks in Japan have decided to have their assets frozen. In essence, Putin will not be able to use the reserves deposited in yen, dollars, euros to protect the ruble. What are the consequences of this? On the one hand, it will limit Russia's ability to provide liquidity to commercial banks. It also does not allow the easy insurance of the deposits in Russian citizens and it doesn't allow to maintain the value of the ruble. The consequence is obvious, capital flight and bank runs. Moreover, with a worthless ruble without foreign currency backing, the purchasing power of the Russian citizens will be eroded and the economy will suffer from high inflation rates. Without dollars to sell, Putin has to raise interest rates to prevent capital flight. This measure has also catastrophic consequences for the Russian economy because borrowing costs raise and growth and the sustainability of the economy are, are, are questionable. We have already seen the first sign of desperation on the part of the Russian authorities. The central bank has raised interest rates from 9.5% to 20% and companies have been ordered to use 80% of their foreign currency revenues to prop up the ruble. De facto, Gazprom's revenues from gas sales are serving to keep the ruble on life support. That is the liquidity that is in the economy and that's the hole that, for the moment, we have left in these sanctions. On the one hand, we block Russia, sure, but on the other hand, we continue to send them over a billion euros a day for the purchase of gas and oil. These purchases generate the only foreign currency liquidity that Russia has and a key tool for the Russian Central Bank to continue to support the ruble. That hole will need to be closed and Sadly, many European countries are for the moment too depending on Russian gas to do it. The Russian economy will be suffering uh, from these sanctions, but so will the European ones uh, and, and the rest of the world. The sanctions always have consequences for both sides. But there is no room for cost-benefit calculations here when it comes to safeguarding peace and democracy and when innocent people are being slaughtered on the doorstep of the European Union. We must continue and intensify these sanctions to make Putin desist from his folly.